Bang, knees, knives. I'm Jared, my lovely wife Kara's at work, and today we are doing the review on the Swags or the Kaiser Swags Swayback. The Bleed Steel's N690 handles are G10 with steel liners, button lock, rolling on ceramic bearings. Now, I did use this thing. Um, I used it uh, quite a bit. I carried it. Even Kara carried it. She liked it quite a bit. Um, I used it at work a lot. At first, I thought it was a little awkward in the hand, but it really makes sense now. And I'm going to talk about that here in a minute. Let's look at a couple of utility cuts because it really shines doing utility cuts. You know, opening packages up and, you know, just breaking stuff down. I did cut a couple straps. It works really good for getting behind straps, but you do have to be careful not to poke what you're trying to, you know, the, the, the item that the strap is on because if it's really tight against the materials it can poke it but you know for the most part you can get behind things really well and pull cut the utility cuts like i said is where it really shines but it does slice very well it slices through cardboard really good it has a very thin blade stock now the blade stock is very thin behind the edge could be a little thinner but because the blade stock is so thin it goes through materials really nicely now it is a little different because of the blade being so thin compared to the thickness of the handles but it works it kind of gives you a, you know a lot of leverage especially behind the tip you do get a lot of leverage and being around christmas opening up packages you know maybe cutting out wrapping paper you know whatever the, the utility cuts are very very useful i find utility cuts to be you know a lot of the cuts the cutting that i do you know is from the tip of my knife and this one's just great for that now before i sharpened it i did get a couple um a little clip of the factory edge let's take a look at that all right now this thing does cut so well because behind the edge thickness, you know, it's not really, it's not thick. You know, they could have went a little thinner, but it's about 18 thousandths and it tapers down to about 15 thousandths behind the edge because the edge does kind of taper from a little bit thicker back here to thinner to thinner all the way to the thinnest point is the tip. Now, before we talk about sharpening it, let's look at the thickness of this blade. Look at it compared to the Benchmade Bug Out. You can see how thin it really is. It's a very, very thin blade. Let's talk about sharpening it. Now, if you're going to use thinner stones when sharpening this, you have to make sure that after you have your angle, you make sure it's flat all the way across the stone back and forth make sure you don't teeter at all like that and that can happen very easily with a straight edge like this a worn cliff edge that is very straight it's very easy to rock a little bit because you're coming off of the stone putting weight with this hand so you can easily teeter so you can use your other hand to help balance it and keep it nice and flat meaning don't roll it don't roll it around just nice and straight straight back and forth now when using a stone that's a bit bigger you want to do the same thing like the little stone except for you're using more of the stone hold it nice and flat if you start coming off the stone like that make sure you do not rock or put weight downward nice and straight you can even go straight like this so that you never come off the stone if possible careful about putting pressure in certain spots because that that pressure right there me doing that look what i'm doing you can see that the angles moving a little bit it'll either move this way or this way so careful with pressure nice and flat and if you come off the stone just don't rock at all make sure it's nice and straight nice and flat i wound up sharpening right on my diamond stones i didn't need to use diamond stones but it wound up working out 
very well for the, the N690 steel, which is a very stainless steel. It's very easy to sharpen. It holds a good edge. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like VG10, 14C28N. Not changing angle. I'm just making sure that the stone is going all the way to the tip. Nice and flat. I did go from 300 grit to 600 grit. After finishing on a 600 grit diamond stone, I strapped it on a on my Veneve diamond compound. And the hardest part about strapping is not poking your strap with the tip. You can start right here at the top with the tip. If it starts poking into your leather but if you're if you're careful you can do it without poking your strap without the tip poking into your leather look at the edge it got after sharpening it the grip pattern was really nice like i said it uh, sharpened up great you know after uh cutting some paper you always got to take a couple extra swipes on the strap because i'm uh because i'm crazy like that and then you know if you do have a jeweler's loop that you use to look at your edge like i do make sure you don't lay it on its you know on the the glass make sure you don't lay it on the lens make sure you lay it on the side or close it up and put it back in its case or fold it up now after all that let's take a look at the size really quick the size comparison because this is not a big knife it's the same size as the qsp penguin maybe a little eh, yeah they're about right even and then here's the benchmade bug out since we showed the thick of the edge the benchmade bug out is a little bit longer a couple more budget knives these are all really good price knives the cjrb mini feldspar another great budget knife this year the civv elementum and s35 vn they are about the exact same length almost i think the kaiser might have no it's it's about right there but another great, great uh, budget buy. And then just one more. Here's the Sencut Citus, Sidious, whatever it's called, by, by We and Civivi. It's a little bit longer, but these are all great budget knives. Now, another Warncliffe blade shape or uh, Sheep's Foot blade shape, the, the Civivi McKenna, another great buy. They work very similar. Now, let's talk about this action because the action is so good on this thing. And then we'll talk about the ergos. The sound of this thing is incredible. I really like the tink it makes. I don't know if it'll come up on camera. It has like a tink noise. It sounds really good. But the, the detent is pretty strong. So if on the flipper tab it is jimped, you can just light switch it or you can push button it. Both are very nice. Like I said, the detent is well tuned for the flipper tab. It is pretty strong for the, the thumb studs, but it breaks in and works so good. Like the tension you get from that button lock acting as a detent is very nice. Very nice and snappy. The reverse flick works incredibly well. Since the button lock is on bearings, incredibly smooth. 
You gotta be careful not to swing it because it will pop back out and then you wanna close it with your middle finger like I do. So if it pops back out like that, I just pop it right in with my middle finger. But you can get it to just close right up if once you get it down pat. But like I said, it does kind of get a little taken used to. But very easy. Now you can push the button and deploy it. I don't really do that, but you can do it. It will just come right out. And if you time it just right, you know, you can get it to open up and lock perfectly. You just push the button and then snap it and let go of the button and it'll lock right in place. Now, if you let go of the button while it's swinging, it will stop. Now you can push it shut from there or you can just push the button again and hold it at an angle. It is nice and centered. Let's take a look at a button lock. So it is on a spring. There's a spring inside there. If it'll zoom or get clear. So there's a button. There's the button. You see it's springing. There's where it locks in at. You can see that. So in theory, that, that spring is always pushing to lock it up tighter and tighter. It is locked up very solid. Now, in theory, it sh the lock should just get stronger and stronger through time. Now, the detent, it's, this is acting as the detent right here. When it closes in, there's a groove cut out. You'll see it right here. See that groove cut out right there? That's acting as the detent. So, it sits in there, and then that's how you, where you get the tension to pop it out. Stop pin. Not a, not a bad stop pin. The liners are nice and thick. Everything's pretty thick on the handle. That is one thing. So let's talk about that. The Ergos being a sway back design, it is a little weird in the hand when you just grab it. You're like, what is going on? Like, this is funky. But in use, when you're using it, the thing is, is that you kind of lay your palm over this little swell right there. And your middle finger kind of wraps around and you pinch it like that. And then this part sits right in the crook of your hand. And you get a lot of leverage from your palm pushing down right here on the spine. It feels really good actually to do the utility cuts. It works really good. And you can line it up with your finger to do nice straight cuts. Now, when you're slicing with it, you turn it anyways. So you turn it kind of like this. Now... It wraps kind of around this side of the palm. It kind of makes sense in use when you actually use it. Now, if you just grip it and you're just holding it, you're like, man, this feels a little awkward. But in use, it actually works pretty good. And then if you just do like cuts like this, you know, your thumb lands right on the jimping, you're kind of pinching right there, your fingers wrap around that swell, and then it kind of just rests and then puts pressure right on your palm. Works really good, actually. Now, the clip. The clip is not a deep carry clip. Um, just a regular clip. It works great. Works fine. Leaves a little bit hanging out of the pocket, so you've got something to grab onto. It carries good. You know, this thing's not heavy. I mean, it's heavy for its size of a knife, but it's really not bad. I mean, there, I could never say a knife this big would be heavy or too heavy. So, it's not, you know, it's just fine. A lot of things are done really good on this. Nice sharpening choil. The sharpening choil worked really good. Plunge grind is out of the way. I like that they did that. The swedge right here gives you a, a nice acute tip with a little bit of strength behind it, but it's not a strong tip. So don't plan on prying with it. Plan on doing utility cuts with it. It is, you know, more of a finer cutting knife. But this is the like the kind of knife that a lot of cuts are done with. So it does work really good. The grip from the the thumb studs is well done. The, the jimping on the flipper tab is also well done. It's rounded right here at the very tip, but it's easy to snag. At least for me it is. So the G10, nice and grippy. The texturing on the G10 is done very well. Now, now one thing, I know people are looking at this thinking it's like a liner, right? Or maybe they're making a liner lock version and that's why they did this little cutout right here because it looks like a liner lock and there was a bunch of times I grab it and I go to unlock it like that and I, I've done it a bunch of times. 
Now, at first, I thought maybe they're just making extra of the, the or making the handle and everything just the same, so that when they do a liner lock version, it, they they can just use the same parts, right? Possibly, that's possibly the reason. But in hand, I feel like if this did line straight up. If this came all the way out as far as this, I feel like it would feel very boxy. My finger actually wraps with this little groove right here, wraps around very nicely right there. It actually is pretty comfortable. So it kind of makes sense in hand. This this hand or the, the you know the the shape is it seems like it was you know well thought out kind of in a way like i don't know if it was accidental or if it was actually well thought out but it works so i'm not even going to complain about that the only thing i could say that's bad about that is that you constantly keep on trying to unlock it like it's a liner lock um now like i said the clip is reversible it only has the the two spots to take it apart that's amazing pivot and right there one standoff that's awesome. Also, what's great is if you're left-handed and you do want to switch the clip around, you can. I mean, it's a button lock, so it winds up working out left-handed. Very nice. I mean, it's your pointer finger that's going to be doing the, the button instead of your thumb. So, very nice. Definitely ambidextrous. There's no lanyard hole. I like that. I, I mean, if you're a lanyard guy, maybe this isn't the one or just not the one you're going to put a lanyard on. I love how fidgety it is. There's so many things to like about it. There's really not that bad, not, not many bad things. The stone washing is very nice on the blade. If I was going to say, and you see the weight relief in there. Now, if I was going to name some bad things, I would say the clip should have been stonewashed. They got a stonewashed blade. Why'd they polish this clip? I know it's probably so you can see the swags, but you would see that with the stone washing too. The liners, I don't like that they're polished either. I wish that they were stonewashed. I think it would make it look like a little bit more of an expensive knife. Um, the button too. I just wish all these parts were stone washed like the blade. It would match very well. Now they still have the silver or, you know, steel look. So I guess that works out just because it all matches in a way, but I just feel like it would match a lot better. People are probably going to complain that it's a little thick because it is pretty thick. It's actually even thicker than the penguin by just a little tiny bit. Not by much, but it's basically about the same thickness as the penguin, but it is a little tiny, tiny bit thicker. So I think that's going to be something that people are going to complain about, especially with the blade so thin. But um, it just, to me, it just kind of gives you a little bit better grip with that thin blade. Now, other than that, the T6s, you guys already know, I'd rather see T8s. It's got a T6 down here, and then the T6s on the clip. And this is a clip that you can flip, so you don't have to take it off, though, to take it apart. So I don't really mind the clip, but I do mind this screw right here. Wish it was a T8. Not that big of a deal. Now, you can take advantage of this um this little choil if you really really want to it does work it is a little awkward in the hand this way and that is another thing it is a little awkward in the hand until you use it so and possibly in some cuts it might feel a little awkward in the hand um the reset button is kind of cool because I can't really push it if I lay my fingers across both sides. I have to actually mean to push it. I kind of like that. It's kind of a safety. I can see it shaking a little bit, but you actually got to push past the, the groove right there to really get it to swing. So that's kind of cool. Love the sounds of it. Um, now, if I was going to say another bad thing... Now, I did hear somebody say that they would like to just uh, remove the flipper tab, but you'd have to be careful because you see where that's where the detent is. So if you did remove it and you just made a thumb stud knife, you would run into problems. But man, it's so tuned with all this action. It works out great. But now with that flipper tab gone, it would be, you know, that would be really nice to put your finger there. So, but... 
it works out great. There's really not a lot of bad here. Just those couple little things, the T6, the um the T6s, the 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 grip can be a little awkward at times. I wish they would have stonewashed a few, you know, the clip and the liners. Um, other than that, this is a great knife and I, I can't really complain too much about it. Like I said, it's a little bit awkward in the hand, but this thing is very well done. Very, you know, the detent is just incredible. The sounds are nice. It's a great little utility cutter and it just, it works. I love you guys. Peace.